I'm going to tell you what I know. Okay. You can tell me. Okay. The video of you working in the garage on your friend's car, Christian, or whatever you want to call him, friend. You've known him, you've known him forever, so I call him a friend. He may be a landlord, but he's still your friend. Yeah, I've known him a lot. Yeah, and you set up a surveillance system for him. Mm -hmm. We reviewed the video. You were not there during what you said. Uh, we know you weren't in bed. Um, I, I never home. said that I was in bed the whole time. I'm sorry. Back you said you were sick all weekend. Right. At home. <clears throat> so whether that means you walked outside or whatever. I know you weren't there. I had you physically documented with photographs where you went, where you shot, where you spent time. I know. Listen, you can't beat this. It is what it is. Okay, right now, I want your side of the story. Um, I don't think it's fair for Mark Sievers to not be in jail after he hired you and, well, I don't know if you knew about Jimmy, but after he hired you to help him with this problem and you brought Jimmy in and you guys went down, did the deed, verified that Jimmy was there, had pictures of Jimmy there with you guys side by side uh, with date and time stamp, GPS location. It's, it's done deal. You're in Florida in the weekend. You're right near Teresa Sievers' house. You went to the house. Now, here's the difference. <clears throat> Whether you went in there dressed up with a suit and killed Teresa or Jimmy did it and you were outside, that's different. Uh, being a lookout versus actually being the one that you know killed her, that actually physically ended her life, is way different. Because it's reasonable to me to suggest, based on your handicap, your disabilities, your inflammation, that you maybe didn't possess, possess the strength to do it. Um, keep in mind, <laughs> I have Jimmy. Jimmy's talking. And Mark, if he has a brain, because he's not getting that money. He's not going to get the money. They know that he's involved in the homicide of his wife. He will not see that money. You guys are never going to see that money because he's not going to see the money. On June 29, 2015, Dr. Teresa Sievers was found dead on her kitchen floor. She came home early from a family vacation in Connecticut so that she could see patients. But when she didn't turn up for work, her family started to worry. Her husband called their neighbor. Hey, Mark. This is Mark. Teresa's not at work yet. And the office is calling and texting, and we can't get through to Teresa. Uh, maybe she's just found asleep. It's just not like her. You know, in all the years, I've known her to be a half hour late for work. A family friend entered the house and was met with the gruesome scene. Taking in the carnage in front of them, they called 911. 911, what is your emergency? My friend, Teresa Sievers, she's a doctor, and she's dead on the floor. Teresa was a holistic doctor and ran her own holistic medical practice called Restorative Health and Healing Center. She was respected in her field, making YouTube videos and being interviewed by magazines to spread information. Hi, I'm Dr. Teresa Sievers, and as I promised you, I was going to be bringing you different modalities of healing. Her husband, Mark, was the office manager at the practice. They had been married since 2003 and had two daughters together. The picture-perfect family lived a different life behind closed doors. Facing crippling financial troubles, they were at their breaking point. Mark attended his childhood friend, Curtis Wayne Wright Jr.'s wedding in 2015, where he told Curtis about his marital troubles. He told me that they, that he and Teresa were having, having problems, uh, marital problems. He told me that she was having an affair um, and that they were having financial problems as well, uh, considering bankruptcy. Did he ask me to do anything? He, he told me that really the only option that he had was for her to die. Um, and he said that he needed to have her killed. Mark had five life insurance policies on Teresa that totaled $4.43 million. If Curtis could help him get rid of her, all of their financial troubles would be over. Unbeknownst to Mark, Curtis enlisted the help of friend Jimmy Ray Rogers, who he would pay with a portion of the money Mark promised him. Curtis rented a car from Hillsborough, Missouri, and picked up Jimmy. They drove all the way to Bonita Springs, Florida, to Teresa's house. On their way, they left a trail of evidence. GPS logs showed the exact route they took, and they were caught on surveillance footage getting gas. They arrived at the house around 6 a.m., where they turned off the security camera and then ran some errands. Surveillance footage from a nearby Walmart showed the two buying trash bags, black towels, black shoes, wet wipes, and a lockpicking kit. 
When Teresa returned home, they were waiting for her. The pair ambushed her, attacking her in the kitchen and fatally striking her repeatedly with a hammer. She was hit at least 17 times and bludgeoned to death. Once the deed was done, Jimmy and Curtis got back in their car and drove home to Missouri. Teresa didn't turn up for work the next morning, and her office immediately knew something was wrong. Later that day, they found out that she had been killed. Her husband, Mark, was still in Connecticut at the time of the murder and had a strong alibi, meaning he was nowhere near the family home when the crime took place. I feel so... I guess I feel pathetic. But at the same time, there's so much going on. <laughs> but it's still hard. I feel that I could have stopped this from happening. How do I get over that? Kill the same time. I really want. Can you tell me when she died? I need to know if she tortured you. What happened to her? We can't life. tell this stage. We were still working on that. Yeah, but she had so much to offer the world. Mm -hmm. She was really. Everyone says this about their wife. <laughs> the police had no leads for the first two months of the investigation. Some suspected that being in the industry of holistic medicine could have made her a target, as there are many people who don't want information about natural healing to be given to the public. But that theory was debunked when police received a tip-off that Curtis and Jimmy were behind the killing. Investigators spoke to Taylor Shoemaker, who was Jimmy's girlfriend at the time of Teresa's murder. And I told him that I knew that he had something to do with it. Okay. And then he, and then he started asking me questions like, what do I know about? And I'm like, well, I know you went down there to kill somebody. And then he said, yeah. I said, did you shoot her? And he said, no. And I said, then how how did you kill her? And he made a stupid little chuckle that he does and then said, with well, a in 2015, authorities arrested Curtis and Jimmy and charged them with murder. So now is the time to explain how and why to save your own life. Because in Florida, premeditation, if we charge it, because right now you're being charged with second degree homicide. And second degree is showing depraved mind is what we call it. Depraved mind. And you're very educated, so I know you know what depraved mind means. <clears throat> That's second degree. First degree shows that it wasn't depraved, that, or maybe not only was it depraved, it's premeditated. And premeditation is when you plan it out. Obviously, this was planned out, but right now you're not charged with that. That may come, that may not. If it does come, it's death penalty eligible. This one alone is punishable by life. So you're facing a PBL. Punishable, punishable by life. <clears throat> so you explaining that Mark asked you to come down and talk to her, or... Mark asked you to come down and kill her because she was going to take the kids away from him and that was his world. Plus, as a bonus, there was going to be money. But his main goal was keeping his daughters or however Mark wanted to spend it. Mark's not arrested yet. And unfortunately, all the physical evidence shows you and Jimmy right now. You guys are done. That's a done deal. Unfortunately. And Mark, Mark's free. And if I was you, even if I knew Mark since 14 years old and I have I have, I think, two friends left in my life from 14 years old. If they asked me to do a job, and unfortunately I got caught, even though I used cash and I left my phone at home and I brought my other friend and used his phone and blah, blah, blah. But if they didn't go to jail, and I did, and I'm losing the rest of my life because how old are you now? 48. Okay, 48. Life. 25, 35 years with parole. That's, that's, so add 30 years to your life right now, okay? So 78 years old, uh, coming out and for what's left of your life, or you may be locked up spending the rest of your life in prison, or they, like I said, um, it's a death penalty eligible crime if they charge first degree. Right now, they haven't done that to you yet. Right now, it's second degree, depraved mind. And, you know, there's all kinds of explanations. Also, there's the opportunity to say, I'm sorry. I didn't physically do it. I brought Jimmy in. Jimmy actually fucking did it. I feel bad. Uh, it just got away from us. We didn't really want to do this, but we did it. We're here, and it makes sense. It made sense ahead of time, but it didn't now. That's what we need to know, because right now, Mark is free. 
Mark Sievers is free. He's the one walking on the beach. He's the one pretending that I'm such a good father uh, that the, I'm going to protect these kids. And I'm not saying he's not a good father because obviously those girls are, are – he's a great father. He's a great father. I just think he made a poor choice because those girls, you see those smiles. You see the light in their eyes. You remember what that was like being a kid that age. Everything was awesome. It was so simple. It was so much fun. It was so much more simple. And then life gets away from us and we make choices. Look, I mean, look at your scars. You didn't do that to yourself. These things happen, and, and, and I have those too. I have, I have a nice one here. I have the ones here, the elbows, my hips. I'm all jacked up. And the older I get, the more jacked up I get. I get it. Life gets away from us. We want creature comforts, and we need to plan for our life. And then we go, wow, um, I'm halfway through, I think. My quality of life's not where I want it to be. Here's an opportunity. With that amount of money that he was going to get, if he found a better way to end his life, end his wife's life, it probably would have been really comfort. And knowing the relationship, I think I understand her. I don't want to insult you. Because if, cause I don't want to say, you know, people say, I know how you feel. That always bothers me when people say, I know how you feel. Because you don't know how I feel. You can maybe imagine how I feel, but you're not inside me. You don't live my life. You don't feel what I feel. So I'm never going to disrespect you like that. What I mean by I understand, I kind of grasp the relationship of you and Mark very close. That's cool that, you know, you're 14 years old, right? A rough, rough, more than 14 years old. That's, you've known Mark longer now than you were alive before you met him. So it's a special relationship. Plus, you care about each other. You love each other. You're, you're brothers. You care each other very much. And it's special. And it means a lot. And that could explain to me why you felt compelled to help Mark. But I need to hear this from you now. This is your opportunity. Because the walls are closing, the wagons have circled. I am taking you to Florida. You're going to be coming with us. By December 2015, authorities had enough information against Mark Seavers to arrest him as well. Despite playing the loving and grieving husband to everyone around him, Curtis and Jimmy made it clear that they were working on his behalf. His behavior since the murder had been strange. He threw away his computer equipment in a dumpster near their medical office on the day of the funeral. At first, he was very cooperative with police, but that changed dramatically when he was facing charges for the murder of his wife. Curtis took a plea deal in exchange for his testimony against Mark and Jimmy. Mr. Wright, who killed Dr. Teresa Severs? Uh, Jimmy Rogers and I physically did it. But uh, Mark Sievers was also involved in the planning. Why did you do it? Um, I was asked to do it. By whom? Uh, Mr. Sievers. Now that Mark was incriminated, Curtis was finally ready to tell the court how he did it. The headlights would have been right on me. I jumped up and I followed her into the house. And um, when she started to turn towards you, what did you do? I, I hit her. I hit her with the hammer. Does she see you? Yes, because I accidentally kicked the dog dish over. The dishes went f flying everywhere. It made a huge noise. Um, she, it startled her. I was afraid that if she turned around, she would scratch me or do something to leave evidence. Um, I, sw I swung the hammer and I hit her. Curtis pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Jimmy faced a first-degree charge with the possibility of the death penalty, but the jury found him guilty of second-degree murder and trespassing. He was sentenced to life in prison. Ultimately, it would be Mark's trial that would be the most explosive of the three. Curtis was the main witness, although it would be risky asking a jury to trust the testimony of a convicted killer. Curtis Wainwright allows us to hear the conversations that occurred between he and Mark Sievers. To hear how Mark Sievers solicited, conspired, and arranged the murder of Teresa Sievers. The evidence has shown that Mark Sievers hired Curtis Wright his best friend would kill his wife, Dr. Teresa Severs. An unconscionable act in light of that sacred contract.
It took three hours for the jury to decide Mark's fate. Everyone knew that Mark Seavers wanted his wife dead so that he could claim millions of dollars in insurance money. He took every step he could to not be caught, making sure he had an alibi thousands of miles away the day of her murder, playing the grieving husband to everyone around him and initially cooperating with police like he had nothing to hide. The jury found him guilty of first-degree murder, and they unanimously recommended the death penalty. He denied the charges throughout the entire ordeal, including throughout his death penalty hearing. Although a jury found me guilty, I am innocent of all charges, as I have maintained since this heinous crime took place. I love my wife, Teresa, and our two daughters, Josie and Carmi, with all my heart. Our girls have tragically lost their mommy, and now they're about to lose their daddy as well. Therefore, I respectfully ask the court for life as not to compound their loss and suffering. I am grateful, however, that the court can only determine my fate on earth while my soul is in God's hands, and God knows the truth. Although I cannot feel remorse for something I had absolutely nothing to do with, I am deeply saddened and forever heartbroken, to say the very least, that Teresa was taken from us. Many believed he spoke about his children as an act of manipulation rather than love. It was Teresa's mother who advocated for her grandchildren during her victim impact statement. And of course, the biggest loss falls upon her two daughters, whom Teresa loved with all her heart. These two girls have been robbed of their remarkable mother, their home, their pets, their possessions, their family and friends. Teresa will not be able to love and guide them. She won't be there when they graduate high school or when they need their mother to kiss away tears from their first heartbreak. We have lost our Teresa, the light of our lives the star of our family, who loved us all so fiercely. It has been hard for all of us to go on with our daily lives. The void is unimaginable. She was our strength, our inspiration, and our caretaker. On January 3rd, 2020, Mark Seavers was sentenced to death. Today, he sits on death row at Union Correctional Institution.